for our fourth edition of the conversation. I have to say this was a interesting weekend. It was my first time really going to New Orleans for Fan Expo. And I have to say, New Orleans is a very interesting place. If you haven't been, I would suggest going, especially the French Quarter. It was a lot of fun. I'll have to give that. But today we are with Ado Van Belkum, and he is an author that actually has an award for the Bram Stoker Award, if I'm correct. Correct. And how are you doing today? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me, Greg. Oh, thank you for being on. So I saw that you actually write more than horror, but what got you started into writing? Uh, when I was uh, young, I always knew I wanted to write something and uh, tried all kinds of things. I did uh, try poetry, and that was pretty crappy. And uh, a couple of friends got together, and we started writing songs. But uh, we wrote songs with uh, that used the word baby a lot, like baby, baby, baby. And they were pretty bad. But um, I read a, a book by Ray Bradbury called The October Country. And I read it uh, in one sitting, and after I finished every story, I thought, wow, that was great. I read the next one, and I thought, that's terrific. And when I finished the book, I said, uh, that's the kind of writing I want to do. I want to write stories like that, and when people finish them, they're going to say, wow, that was terrific. So that was my goal, a lofty goal, but uh, that's what got me started. Sweet. Now, what would you say would be the inspiration to keep you writing and to keep you going? Um, inspiration. Well, once you've decided that that's what you're going to do, uh, it's inspiration kind of takes a backseat to determination because I was determined to succeed at it. And when I had determined that I was going to do this, um, I realized that I had to work extremely hard at it. I was in school, not a very good student. I was able to do very little studying and get by and, you know, get adequate marks that keep everyone happy. And I realized that when I wanted to be a writer, that wasn't going to be good enough because there are dozens, hundreds, thousands of people that also want to achieve that goal and they're going to work harder than you. I mean, you can be the toughest guy in the room, but there's always someone tougher, smarter, meaner, always somebody better. So I had to de devote every bit of my life towards uh, succeeding as a writer. So I would walk around with books in my pockets for a spare moment. I would read. Um, I was always thinking about things, keeping a diary, uh, just everything was pointed towards a success as a writer. And eventually, um, I did achieve it. There's a saying that to, to achieve success in a, as a writer, and this uh, goes for anything, three things are necessary, but only two of the three are actually necessary for ultimate uh, eventual success. Um, one is talent. One is uh, perseverance. But the one that people uh, don't think about is luck. So you can have two of those. You can have talent and get lucky and succeed. You can persevere and eventually get lucky and, and succeed. Or you can have talent and persevere and you will succeed. So uh, if I, the thing I had uh, power over or control over was the perseverance part. Uh, the talent was whether it's there or not. And uh, so I persevered and it, it worked out in the end. Well, we do have a question from Daniel. Other than Bradbury, what other authors influenced your writing? My uh, other favorite writers it would include Richard Matheson, Robert Block, who I loved, uh, Joe Lansdale, who is uh, a gritty uh, writer. He doesn't do uh, as much horror. Well, he probably does. I haven't read him in a while, but uh, he was also one of my favorites. And... Um, a writer who's very accomplished and published lots of books, Ed Gorman. I, I thought he was really good. Just solid professional writers. Um, I'm the kind of writer who does write stories um, that where things happen. 
It's not, you never read one of my stories and wonder what the hell is going on because I'm very keen on telling you exactly what's going on, what's happening next and how it's going to end. And you never have to end up scratching your head. Uh, to some, that's a detriment. To some, I should be spending more time on uh, characterization or imagery and all those things. But it's not in my DNA to do that. So I admire professional writers who can tell stories where I'm immersed in it. I never have to wonder what's going on and things happen and I see why they happen, where they happen. And, and I love uh, really solid endings. That's another thing that I like to have is endings that are proper and you know that the story has ended and maybe it hints at going on, but it doesn't let trail off like it was at the end. So uh, those are the kind of writers I like and try to emulate. And hopefully at this point in my career, I've, I've done some of that. Very nice. Now, I noticed on the Bram Stoker, you actually won that with another author. David That's Becker. right. Uh, we won the Bram Stoker Award for a short story called Rat Food. Um, I was uh, working at the time as a police reporter for uh, the North York Mirror in Toronto. And Dave Nickel, a friend of mine, was um, a news reporter there. He's the guy who got me that job. I was filling in for a woman who had gone on maternity leave. And uh, we sat around, you know, having a coffee, talking about stories that we're working on. So I had this idea for a story and he had an idea on how it should uh, turn out and we said okay let's write it together and we did and this was back before it was easy to send files back and forth by computer we uh, struggled with that we were working on paper and 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 formats and different things because it was uh, you know that that was the time but we got it done and we submitted it to a, an anthology edited by J.N. Williamson, Jerry Williamson, Masks Anthology. Maybe some of your listeners or viewers know that name. He did a lot of leisure and zebra horror books, and he did this uh, anthology series called Masks. He never did end up buying the story, but he spent a lot of time outlining how we could improve it, um, sending us back to, you know, very detailed things about how we thought uh, should, it should be improved. And we did that and uh, turned out the, the story, you know, turned out great and won the Bram Stoker Award for that year. And uh, it's funny, I haven't collaborated with anyone since, but uh, Dave's gone on to do a couple of uh, stories and novels with Carl Schrader, a science fiction writer that, that we both know. But uh, one time only collaboration ended up with the Bram Stoker Award. So it was uh, very fortuitous. Now, a lot of people don't know this, but it is actually decently hard to do a collaboration. Uh, well, we, we knew each other's strengths and we decided how we were going to do it uh, going in. I would write the first part, he would write the second part, and then we would hand the story off to each other and fix whatever we thought needed fixing and then we got together and worked on it together and you know went back and forth like that so hopefully or if someone reads it they don't know what parts i wrote and what parts they wrote where it's seamless that would be uh, you know the the best uh, outcome but um, it was fun not to say that i wanted to do it again but it was uh, really good and we had a, a terrific story with a great ending i'm just hoping someday somebody will adapt it to some anthology show because it really deserves to be a, to have a wider audience. <laughs> I would love to collaborate on anything. I have so many stories I have started and not finished. Well, uh, uh, I'll, I'll tell you this. Uh, fan asked a writer one time at a convention, he says, uh, how do you write a novel? And he says, well, you sit yourself in the chair and you start writing and you don't get up until it's done. So uh, the finishing of a project, project is an accomplishment on its own. So that's the hard part. A lot of people write novels and they get mid-novel angst, and which I've had is myself. You get to the middle and you say, oh, this is terrible. This is, you know, the, I'm gonna be exposed when this is, comes out that I have no talent whatsoever. But you have to get past that 
plow through it, get to the end and complete it and then worry about it after. Because once you finish something and then you get back to it, you start reading and say, oh, you know, this isn't too bad. I did all right on this. You know, that there's something here. So mm-hmm. very important for anyone who wants to get into the writing game to finish something. Finishing something is an accomplishment. And that's the first step on the way to actually publishing something. I can actually vouch for that. But to go on, you actually have a story that's fixing to be on Paramount Plus? Correct. Uh, In 2004, uh, at the suggestion of my wife, I'd edited two young adult anthologies at this point, Be Afraid and Be Very Afraid. And she convinced me to, to write for young adults. So I did. I did a novel called Wolfpack. And uh, it won both the Aurora Award in Canada and the Silver Birch Award, which is an award voted on by um, elementary school students in the province of Ontario. And it won handily on that one as well. And I did three other books in the series, uh, Lone Wolf, Cry Wolf, and Wolf Man. And by two th- that was 2004, the first book came out. By 2012, all four had run their course, and the book was basically out of print. And then 12 years later, uh, my agent lets me know that someone's interested in the uh, film rights or television rights to Wolfpack. And uh, I thought they were, he was crazy. Like, these people are crazy. It's been out of print for 12 years. Do they know that? You know, like, and it was like, yeah, okay, I guess so. Well, you know, we'll take that uh, offer. Little did I know that they already planned uh, the production and that they had <laughs> Jeff Davis signed on to do the, the series. They didn't let me know that, but uh, <laughs> somehow somebody had gave him a copy of the book and he liked what he read and decided he, he could do a TV series around it. So it's a yes, very unlikely story. I'd say it's akin to being hit by lightning and I'm happy for it. I have no uh, no problem with it. I'm just having an, I wouldn't be on the, even this show if this wasn't happening now. So. I'm having a great time. I'm enjoying it. I'm going for a, a, a ride. We went down in October to visit the set where they were filming in Atlanta. Uh, next week, we're going to Los Angeles for the red carpet premiere, my wife and I. And uh, for a little bit, we are getting to experience Hollywood. And, uh, you know, at this point in my life, I never thought it would happen. So I'm just enjoying it. I'm grateful for every moment that I can get out of it been a lot of fun. Yes, I have to agree. That is fantastic. And congratulations on that. I appreciate the the kind words. Thank you. Now, if I'm correct, that air that starts on Paramount Plus on January 26 in Canada and the U.S. Uh, Canada and the U.S. in January 26. And from what I can tell, there might be two episodes that day. There's eight in the first season. Two episodes might be airing that day. And then the next day, uh, it's going to premiere around the, the rest of the world. And when I say the rest of the world, I mean it. It's going to be like the Philippines, South Korea, Brazil, the Caribbean, South America, uh, Eastern Europe, a bunch of countries in, uh, in Europe. It's, it's really uh, a global uh, thing Paramount's putting it on. So let's just hope uh, it's going to be a success. Now, if anybody wanted to purchase the book, where could they do that at? A uh, hard copy for the book does not exist yet. Uh, it will be coming out later uh, this month and hopefully in uh, bookstores. And that will only be the first uh, book, Wolf Pack. The uh, other books are all, all of them, all four, are available in ebook format. And, you know, you, all you need to do is type in Ado Van Belkum, Wolf Pack, ebook, or anything like that. It'll take you to any number of sites that sell those. And um, Podium, the young adult uh, arm of Audible, uh, is doing um, audio books. The first one will be available this uh, this month, and the other three will be in February, March, and April. And the, all the books are being read by a Canadian, uh, I call him actor. I mean, he's an actor, a voice actor, so he's reading the books. Alan Carlson, he's doing a great job. I've listened to some samples of uh, his work on my book, and it sounds terrific. So I'm really excited about that, too. And that, that'll be available 
in due course. They're already up on the sites, but they haven't actually made the physical product yet, but it's on the way. Yeah, now where can people find you online? Um, you know, I did have a website uh, for a while, but that was early on, and I didn't know much. I'm a, you know, I'm a tweener guy. I started in newspapers writing on typewriters, and uh, so I never grew up with all this stuff being second nature. I'm learning Facebook. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. I'm learning TikTok, and I'm going to be doing uh, some short videos called hopefully do them called Wolfpack Facts, where I talk about the series, the books, horror in general, things like that. And um, if you, I, what I use as my actual website is my agent's uh, author page, Jabberwocky Literary Agency. If you go to that and then go to the author section and then click on my name, all my books are represented there with uh, clips of... Uh, reviews and positive reviews and things like that. I use that as sort of my website. <laughs> uh, Dan. Hey, Dan computers are hard that. for me anyway. I'm an old man. You can see in my face, <laughs> the beard and the, everything else. It, the computer stuff's hard. So I'm just, I'm learning it and I get frustrated when the things don't go the way they should, but I'm learning and I'm putting the product out there. So little by little. I shaved mine. <laughs> well, COVID, I had it down to here, but uh, I had to get rid of that because uh, it wasn't being covered up by a mask anymore. Uh, well, we want to thank you for being on the show. Oh, my and, pleasure. And we look forward to seeing the TV series come out on Paramount+. Plus. You and I both. I haven't seen it yet. Uh, next week will be my first, uh, my first time to see it. And then... Um, we're also having a hometown uh, special screening here in, in my hometown of Brampton, Ontario. We rented a, a small uh, library theater where I'm giving a reading of the, the first scene, then we're going to see the premiere, and then I'm going to give a talk about how all of this happened in the most unlikely fashion. So that's on February 5th. So there's a couple events coming up, and I'm looking forward to all of them. Very nice. But again, thank you for being on, and everyone, our next show will be at noon today. Until then, adio.